The United States may be the world's largest economy for now, but China is the largest trading nation in the world. Despite losing pole position in 2013, trade has been an engine of growth for the United States for decades, and this is where the U.S. trade representative wields considerable influence. For the United States trade representative, who nominated Catherine Tai, a trusted trade expert, a dedicated public servant who knows government, the job is even more critical amidst the rise of China's economic might and its wider ambitions, such as its Made in China 2025 roadmap and the Belt and Road Initiative. These, together with increased protectionism worldwide, will have broader geopolitical implications in the long term. So what is the role of a trade star all about and how will this affect U.S. trade policies? The Office of the U.S. Trade Representative, or USTR, develops and executes the country's international trade, commodity and direct investment policies, including trade deals. This is done through its offices that handle bilateral negotiations, multilateral deals, sectoral activities, policy coordination and public outreach. Some of these offices cover geographical regions, while others handle specific issues such as intellectual property, textiles, environment and labor. All these are done by a small team of over 200 staff, including lawyers and economists. At the helm is the trade representative, or informally a trade czar, the principal trade advisor to the president, negotiator and spokesperson on trade issues. The number of SARS in each administration reads like a laundry list, and the number varies according to who is in the White House. In fact, the term SAR is an unofficial title for official advisors to the president. During the Obama administration, there was a Green Jobs SAR, an Ebola SAR, and get this, an Asian carp SAR to handle the invasive fish species threatening America's biodiversity. Some critics have said that these SARS add unnecessary layers of bureaucracy to the government. In 2009, six Republican lawmakers wrote in a letter to Obama that his bevy of SARS may be undermining the constitutional oversight responsibilities of Congress. But not all SARS are created equal, and the informal title is a relatively modern phenomenon that gained ground with Franklin Roosevelt. Most SARS are appointed directly by the president, while some, such as the drug SAR and the trade SAR, must be confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Until 1962, the trade SAR role didn't exist, and the U.S. State Department was largely responsible for trade and investment diplomacy. If appointed, Catherine Tai will be the first Asian-American to serve as the trade chief. Her experience in negotiating with China meant that she had wide bipartisan support, including from labor and big business groups. Tai, who has family roots in China and Taiwan, is a graduate of Yale University and Harvard Law School. From 2007 to 2014, the Connecticut native worked at the USTR with the final three years as the chief lawyer to police China trade issues. In 2012, the fluent Mandarin speaker was instrumental in getting 18 other economies to join a landmark case against China at the World Trade Organization regarding its restrictions on rare earth exports. Her subsequent work in Congress on the renegotiated US-Mexico-Canada agreement and legislation proposals that banned imports made with forced labor in China's Xinjiang region has drawn bipartisan support for her appointment. Tai's experience in confronting unfair trade practices with China may mean that the trade war between the two countries is unlikely to end anytime soon. But unlike Trump's trade czar Robert Lighthizer's knuckle-duster approach of alienating allies, Tai is expected to favor a conciliatory approach. In August 2020, Tai called Lighthizer's tariff wars largely defensive and outlined a more offensive approach to be faster, nimbler, able to jump higher and able to compete stronger. This is in line with Biden's priority to strengthen multilateral ties with traditional U.S. allies in Asia and Europe in dealing with China. During the Obama-Biden administration, she was the chief trade enforcer against unfair trade practices by China, 
which will be a key priority in the Biden-Harris administration. This might mean that Thai could be instrumental in pivoting the U.S. back to Asia through bilateral trade deals or multilateral ones such as the CPTPP or the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Trump withdrew from in 2017. This will allow the U.S. to have a say in writing the trade rules in the 21st century while countering China's growing influence in the region. This historic nomination comes at a time when multilateralism is in retreat worldwide, while China is asserting its might to rewrite the rules of the global order. With global trade battered by the pandemic, challenges brewing domestically, and America's international standing eroded, Tai will have a job cut out for her. Trade is like any other tool in our domestic or foreign policy. It is not an end in itself. It is a means to create more hope and opportunity for people. And it only succeeds when the humanity and dignity of every American and of all people lie at the heart of our approach. Hi everyone, we'd love to know what you think Biden's new traits are will bring to the table. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and stay safe.